Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Scarland here bringing you a new Neverwinter video. In today's agenda, we're going to be releasing another Warlock build for Mod 20. This is going to be the Companion build. Now, as always, full disclaimer, these gods are meant to just guide you in the right direction. You're always feel free to, you know, tinker and adjust accordingly, especially if you don't have all the right items. So if you watch the previous guide video for mod 20 uh the augment build uh that works out perfectly fine however companions will outweigh the augment in my opinion uh companion damage is just essentially bonus damage um and there are still companions in the game that will provide a good bit of dps so as long as you can hit your statistical caps there's no reason not to use an active companion uh, the augment build is completely fine. If you want to run the augment build, then that's your own prerogative. However, most people, especially DPS, are running active companions and still maintaining all their statistical hard caps. So without further ado, uh, I did get feedback in the comment section of the last guide. Uh, some people liked the way I did it in that video with Rainer's character builder, and some people didn't like it and they wanted me to go back in-game and do it. So I think in this video we're going to do a mixture of both, so we're going to talk about AoE, single target, people asked for rotation, so I will be including that as well. So, let's jump right in. First and foremost, let's go ahead and look at the race. Of course we are still Sun Elf, that way we get the 5% action point gain. If we look at our attributes, you're going to go full intelligence for the magical damage boost, as well as full charisma for the forte and recharge speed. Let's go ahead and take it to the gear. Uh, nothing has changed from the augmented uh, build except, you know, minor adjustments. So if you watch that already, then you should be pretty attuned to it. So we're going to quickly go through this. We are using the blessed Garisto's horns for the critical strike. You're going to be using all darks in your utility slots for the forte. For the armor, you're going to go with the Bone Devil's Ribcage if you have it. If you don't, you know, you're going to have to make adjustments. And our defensive slots, we're using full demonics. However, you can use draconics. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. For the armor enchantment slot, I'm still using a shadow clad. However, most likely the best in slot is going to be negation. You're want to get it, you're want, you're going to want to get your hands on a negation. As far as the gloves, I did a separate video on DPS gloves, a whole video on it. If you didn't miss, uh, if you didn't uh, see that one, feel free to go back and check that out. Uh, for me, I'm going with the Tempter Twilight gloves for the encounter damage. As far as the weapon set on AoE, I'm still using the Redeem Citadel set. Uh, and really, the only reason I'm using this is for the set bonus of every 30 seconds, I have a chance to, you know, increase my action point gain by 7.5%, or I'm going to increase my critical strike by 5%. The critical strike is kind of irrelevant. It's just a buffer in case my Garisto's uh, horns aren't proccing all the way. And you're also going to get 3% power accuracy and combat advantage, which is, again, it's just a buffer. We'll talk about that when we look at the character builder. But the main reason I use this set is it has high item level, thus increasing my overall damage. And then, of course, I'm looking for that action point gain by 7.5%, which really helps on AoE when you're navigating through the dungeon and you're popping your Tyrannical uh, or your Soul Siphon and you're just clearing trash mobs. Uh, you want to get your action points as fast as you can. Now, of course, as the weapon enchantment, we are still using a lightning. Uh, it just, it's too good not to use, uh, especially in AoE situations, especially on the Warlock. All of my offensive slots are going to be gigantics. The boots, we are still using the rusted iron leggings for the 5% damage, but keep in mind that does de uh, decrease your incoming healing by 25%, which is a quite, you know, significant number. So make sure you have an adequate healer with you if you're doing harder content. As far as the three-piece set uh, on AoE, I'm still using the Lost Mouth because it's still, in my opinion, one of the best sets uh, specifically for the Warlock in an AoE situation. There's no real good three-piece sets right now. The new set coming in Mod 20 
uh, could be okay just because it's going to be way higher item level and it has the same effect as the old school Demogorgon set, but we'll have to compare. Right now, the Lost Mouth set is just too good to pass up, especially on AoE situations. You just do an additional hit for 100 magnitude damage every time you critical hit. Uh, and it's just too, it's too good to pass up. And it also double stacks and double procs with the three-piece journal set. So you're essentially doing double damage. For the rings, we are still using two guiding rings of the spy, which are the accuracy rings. But what's more important is the ranged powers do 3% more damage. So you stack that twice for 6% range damage. For the shirt, we are using the tier 3 piece. This is just uh, one of the ways that I personally cap my power. Uh, just to make sure that extra 5,000. So oh, these aren't ideal for an AoE situation because, you know, I'm zoom zooming around with Shadow Slip. My stamina is very rarely actually full uh, when it comes to AoE. But it, in, in an AoE situation, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, guys. You, you don't need to focus that hard on AoE. You need to clear the trash mobs as quickly as, can, as you can and then get to the boss. As far as the pants, I go with, again, the Tier 3 piece uh, from Avernus. These are just the defense pants, uh, and they have action point gain on them. Of course, I do slot one Tenebrous Enchantment. I always put it in my shirt. Make sure you're using at least one. As far as my active artifact, I go with the Envenomed. It's still too good not to use. Uh, there's nothing that really rivals it, in my opinion. Uh, and then, of course, you need two other journals to get that full uh, set of all the stacking abilities here so you get two uh different set bonuses here as you can see it's, it's just too good there's nothing else that's going to rival this until they come out with something better so that should cover the gear for aoe if we go ahead and look at our powers we are going to be using eldris blast as our main at will with hand of blight secondary blades of the vanquished armies fiery bolt hellfire ring for your dailies, Soul Siphon, I actually use it a lot, uh, it does a lot of damage. Uh, Tyrannical, you can't go wrong with Tyrannical. For the class features, we kind of did, this is, we, we switched it up a little bit here. We are actually going with Dust to Dust for, again, another 5% uh, increased damage. Uh, we used to use Dark Prayers to get our Soul Investor up, but we don't need it anymore, okay? Uh, when we talk about the feats, I'll explain why, but we just don't need Dark Prayers anymore. So there's nothing else really worthwhile for AoE situations. You can go with All-Consuming Curse, but you don't really need it, to be honest. So why not finally use Dust to Dust and get the 5% additional damage? Of course, we are using No Pity, No Mercy. This is personal preference again, because I just simply don't like... Uh, having to get combat advantage manually in an AoE situation. I zoom zoom all over the place. I don't have time for my tank to, uh, you know, establish aggro on all the mobs and then get them all situated and for me to get combat advantage. No pity, no mercy is a no-brainer. Uh, you're going to take this for essentially 100% combat advantage no matter where you're standing. Uh, especially in harder content dungeons like Infernal Citadel, you know, if you're struggling in there. Um then you need to, you know, navigate a little better, right? You need to always be out of the red. You can't stand in the red. You can't make your healer do more work than they need to do. So just having 100% uptime on combat advantage is just too valuable not to use, especially for AoE. So let's talk about the feats. Now, we did use Double Scorch for the longest time uh, because, you know, Soul Scorch does a lot of damage. Don't get me wrong. However, I'm not really focused on the, the Soul Scorch damage anymore, uh, especially for AoE. So what we're doing is, is we are taking Power of the Nine Hells, and what this essentially does is that my encounter powers that don't have a Curse Synergy, they're now going to summon a Soul Puppet. Uh, and the bread and butter for this is usually Hellfire Ring. Hellfire Ring will give you all five stacks of your Soul Investor almost instantly, which I'll just demonstrate it right now since we're standing here. So you can clearly see I have no Soul Investor currently. Uh, all you have to do is literally get Hellfire Ring on a bunch of mobs, and the DOT ticks are going to increase your Soul Investor. You can see my Soul Investor just went instantly up to five stacks, and those stacks are refreshing on the DOT ticks as well. So you're always going to have five stacks of Soul Investor as long as you're hitting everything. Every time my DOT hits off Hellfire Ring, you can just see the time's not even going down. It's just 
20 seconds permanently. Um, and then by that time, you should already have another Hellfire ring up. And again, like I said, you, you should just have essentially 100% uptime on Soul Investor right now. So it's just, it's too easy not to do. Now, do you have to do that? You don't have to. If you really, really want to squeeze out more damage on an AoE situation, you can go back to Double Scorch and use your Soul Sparks uh, and then go back to Dark Prayers. Um, so whenever you kill a target with Curse, then you'll spawn a Soul Puppet. So the old way is a little slower compared to just instantly getting the full damage potential of the Warlock. This is one of the reasons why the Warlock... Uh, is doing very well right now is because they finally worked out the issues on the back end of the coding so now we can almost instantly get all five stacks of our soul investor which is a huge chunk of our damage uh whereas compared to before we had to sit there and build all of those stacks manually uh and it wasn't a good time you had other classes uh, pulling ahead of us in DPS by millions and millions and millions because for the first five minutes of the battle, the Warlock was manually trying to build his self-buffs. Well, it's not like that now. So, that's one of the reasons why the Warlock is doing so well currently. And again, we are talking about risky investment, so you can get those Soul Investor stacks. It's, you know, 20% buff. Creeping Death, no-brainer. Creeping Death does a lot of damage. And then I take Soul Spark Recovery on AoE because I typically don't use my Soul Sparks, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, your Soul Puppet uh, isn't going to increase your cooldowns any faster, regardless. So if you do have full Soul Sparks in an AoE situation and you do you do decide to dump them, then you're just cutting down your cooldowns a little bit. As far as the boons go, uh, I'm not going to go over every individual boon. Go ahead and take a look at the screen here. This is all going to be sa the same for single target other than the master boon. Uh, on AoE, we're taking Deathly Rage. Do you need Deathly Rage? No, you're not going to need Deathly Rage. We'll talk about this in the character builder a little more. Uh, but it's essentially 6% combat advantage, power, and crit severity. I use this as a buffer in case my items aren't proccing or I'm not proccing my companions, for instance. This gives me 6% to 3 prominent stats uh, and on a kill. They last 10 seconds, and it does proc fairly often, actually. So it's not bad to have in an AoE situation. For single target, we go with Bloodlust. We'll talk about that when we get to single target. Stronghold. Uh, I currently go Critical Strike, Defense, Mount Speed. Let's talk about Companions. So this is the Active Companion build. Uh, in my opinion, Zuna is still the best AoE uh, Companion out there. Um, I've tested a lot. I've tested a lot of Companions in the game. Uh, I looked at the ACK logs, and in my opinion, Zuna is still the go-to for an AoE situation. Her bloodbath with her teleporting and hitting numerous mobs, uh, you just can't beat it. Uh, the Cold Iron Warrior, which most people are using for single target, which I'm also using for single target, the Cold Iron War Warrior is good for AoE, don't get me wrong. He has a whirlwind ability and he does loads of DPS. However, the Zuna just still outperforms him. Um, and it's all because of her teleportation. She, the the minimal time that it takes for her to teleport when her bloodbath goes off, it's just it's too good not to use. Uh, with the low cooldown on it, I think it's like 18 seconds. I mean, it's going off almost all the time. 18 seconds. You're looking at maybe, you know, you pull a group of trash mobs, you kill it. You move to the next trash mobs, you kill it. You move to the third group, her bloodbath's up again. So it's like every other pool of trash mobs, essentially she's going to be bloodbathing everything. As far as the equipment goes, uh, I am using um, Gold Leafed Gwimwar, which is combat advantage. Uh, I'm using Critical Strike and Critical Strike. Uh, this is just what I need to hit my statistical caps. Yours may be different. You'll have to tweak and adjust to see uh, what your statistical caps are looking like. Uh, now, as far as the runestone goes, we are using all uh, Indomitables. Now, Indomitables are supposedly getting nerfed down to 10%. We're still going to use them. Um, right now, they're on console, they're still 20%. Uh, but supposedly, they're supposed to get nerfed down to 10% each. But like I said, we're still going to use them. As far as your enhancement, for whatever reason, I have defense on. You don't need defense. You can put whatever it is that you need. If you need combat advantage... Um, 
it, it's essentially up to you what you need. I was playing around with stuff trying to increase my defense for my survivability. Uh, most likely you're going to go with um, combat advantage, which is acute senses here. As far as the companion bonuses go, we are using Wild Hunt Rider for the 11% uh, combat advantage. Fire Archon for the 7.5 combat advantage. The Mystagog is critical severity and combat advantage. We'll talk about that uh, in the character builder because you can take this off if need be. Uh, the Staldorf is just combat advantage. And then the Alchemist is, again, critical chance and combat advantage. Let's go ahead and talk about the mounts. On AoE, I use Arcane Milestorm. You can use whatever you want. You want to use a Legendary Carpet of Flying, be my guest. You want to use Crystal Eruption. They all work. It all depends on your play style and the situation and the dungeon that you're doing. For the equip power, however, I am using Ferocity. This gives me almost another 5% damage when it's fully procced. As far as the stable goes, I'm still using three colors for AoE. Uh, that's encounter powers for 4% more damage. It's a legendary caller. I'm using a movement speed caller and a AP gain caller. We're using Assassin's Covenant times two. We're using Warlord's Inspiration times two and one Gladiator's Gal. And then you can look at the insignias uh, as I go down here. They're mostly all dominances for the Forte. Again, you can, you're can you going to have to balance your own statistics. I do have a few brutalities in here just because I needed to hit those caps, uh, as well as skills to hit the critical strike cap. So that pretty much wraps it up for AoE. Uh, I know some people wanted to see a rotation, so since we're still in game here, I mean, there is no real rotation for AoE. If there's a big group of mobs... I usually uh, will lead with a Hellfire Ring. That way I can get all of my stacks of Soul Investor. I'll pop my Blades of the Vanquished and then finish with a Fiery Bolt. Um, usually in run one rotation, everything should be dead. Uh, even in Infernal Citadel. If you're in a good group and everything, uh, everything should be dead. Uh, I very rarely use my Soul Sparks, so I get the bonus damage from the Soul Sparks as well. But if, you know, it's a very big group of enemies, then, you know, I might be using my Tyrannical, for instance. So if I'm popping my Artifact, I'm popping my Tyrannical, I pop my Whirlwind, um, and then you're just in it. You're in it to win it. You know, you gotta get your blades out there, then if you gotta go ahead and use those soul sparks to pump out the DPS, you're gonna notice that the soul sparks go up fairly quickly. Like, that was almost instant soul sparks after I used them. So, it all depends on how fast you're killing things, uh, how well your group is coordinated, and etc. But there is no real rotation for AoE. You can, you, if you want, you can lead with Blades of the Vanquish, go in there, then drop a Hellfire. Uh, or if you're ahead of the tank... If you're a sweaty kid like me and you're running, you're shadow slipping around the dungeon way ahead of the tank and you want to pull a group of mobs, you can lead with your fiery bolt, pull those mobs to you, then drop your hellfire and then drop your blades and pray to God that your healer is going to heal you because you're going to take significant damage even with the negation uh, and even if you have 50% defense and 50% awareness, it's not going to matter. You're going to take a lot of damage. So that should pretty much cover it, uh, just as far as our uh, potion tray here goes. You know, we are still using the Lyrol's Bell for additional 20%. You know, the real sweaty kids like to swap these out. They have multiple bells. Uh, I'm personally still using Empower Chain of Skells just because it gives me 3% awareness. I don't need the 3% power from the Forger's box, so I choose the awareness. So yeah. That should be it for AoE, guys. We'll jump over to the character builder, and then we'll move into single target. Alright, guys, and very briefly, I just wanted to look at the character builder, show you what your statistics should be looking like with this build for AoE. So you can see these are all unbuffed currently. So if we open up our buff window, you always want to make sure you have a campfire. Now, if you're going full 100% buffs, uh, you're going to try to get the Gift of Awareness from your invocation. If you're using Stronghold Food, you're either going to use the Defense or the Awareness. As far as Elixirs go, we are still using Wildstorm Elixir. For the Potions, we're still using Superior Flask. For the Event Food, we're still using Watermelon Sorbet. If you're going to use a Scroll of Fate, you probably use Defense or Awareness. 
And then finally, like I said, we are using that Chain of Scales. And Chain of Scales is random. You don't know what buff you're going to get from it. Uh, you know you're going to get 3% awareness. So now this is fully buffed. However, this is not including our procs now. So if we proc the Wild Hodden Rider and we proc the Fire Archon and then we proc our Deathly Rage because I think I have the Companion. I'll have the Mystic Gold. So this would be the setup. All your stats are going to be capped. And this is if you're using the Cold Iron Warrior. So the Cold Iron Warrior is 11% additional damage to Fey creatures for mod 20. However, you don't have to use that. You can also use a Siege Master for AoE if you so choose for your at-will damage. Wherever he is. Siege Master, 11%. Now this is why I like to use Deathly Rage, because it gives me the opportunity to do this. So if I un... if my Deathly Rage isn't proc'd, the only thing that isn't going to be capped is my combat advantage, right? Now that, of course, is in the ideal situation. That is with the Wild Hunt Rider proc'ing, that's with the Fire Archon proc'ing. So even if we don't proc either of those, and we proc our Deathly Rage, we're still hitting our statistical caps, but the combat advantage obviously is only going to 75%. So in an AoE situation, it's very hard to proc all of your items. You know, you have to realize with the gear, you're proccing your helmet, you're proccing your breastplate, you have to get the procs on your Wild Hunt Rider, your Fire Archon, and then when you finally kill something, you have a chance to proc this Deathly Rage. Now, if you don't want to go with the Siege Master, you don't want to go with the Cold Iron Warrior, then you can use what I was using which is the uh, Mystagogue, which is crit severity and combat advantage. So if we put the Mystagogue in here, and we don't have anything proc'd, then we're still capped, okay? We're over capped on our crit severity by 4%. So this is why you can sacrifice the Mystagogue because you're relying on the crit severity and the combat advantage from Deathly Rage. It's all basically a gamble. It's a gamble on what you want to do for AoE. Uh, if that's what you want to do for AoE, if you want to put a Siege Master here for the additional 11% at willpower, that's going to solely rely on you and how confident you are of, you know, the game proccing all these items that you need to get procced. So that is it for AoE. These should be your final stats uh, with everything proc'd, you're fully buffed, um, and you should be good to go. This is a good solid build, this is with an active companion, uh, and you're still hitting all your statistical caps. So that's everything for AoE, we're going to move on to single target next. Alrighty guys, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about single target now. Now, not a whole lot of changes uh between the gear right off the bat the garisto helmets <clears throat> are probably going to uh sit out for right now we're probably going to use helm of the sky blazer for single target um the problem is is that in the new dungeon vault of stars uh they're not exactly single target right uh some of the boss encounters do have uh ads that spawn and that means that <clears throat> you won't be getting that 7% combat advantage. Um, the ideal situation for the Helm of the Sky Blazer is typically in the Trowels. So Tower of the Mad Mage and Zariel, where you pretty much know you're only going to have one enemy that you're going to be engaged in combat with. Uh, I'm probably still going to use Helm of the Sky Blazer for single target because I still need that 7%. Uh, and what's going to happen is, is I'm actually just going to stay AoE for some of the boss fights in Vault of the Stars. The breastplate doesn't change. The arms don't change. The weapons, now currently I am still using the Mirage because they're still severely broken on console. Uh, however, the weapon set is completely up to you. If you want to use um, Lionheart, you know, if you want to use the Redeem set, uh, if you want to use the Celestial set, uh, me and my team, <clears throat> I'm 
uh, the group that I plan on doing Vault of the Stars with, we've kind of agreed that we're all going to go Masterwork. Uh, and the reason is fairly simple. Um, as long as all five people in the group have it, you're gaining 10% uh, outgoing damage, outgoing healing, and you're getting negative 10% incoming damage, which is very important for Vault of the Stars, in my opinion. Uh, that's going to stack with your negation as well. So that incoming damage resistance is huge. Uh, and the best part about the Masterwork weapons is, is that you literally don't have to do anything. There's no stipulations. There's no mechanics. You know, such as the Lionheart, where you're only gaining 7.5%. Uh, you have to keep your stamina above a certain threshold, right? Uh, with the Celestial weapons, you have to keep doing DPS. Um, like, there's just no specification um for the masterwork weapons to be triggered as long as all five of you have them you're going to get 10 percent of three important statistics of course 10 percent outgoing damage is huge for dps the 10 percent outgoing healing is going to help your healer and then the 10 percent incoming the negative incoming damage is just good for everyone so that's what I'm probably going to be using. Uh, my group is all going to be using Masterwork, so expect the prices to go up. The boots aren't changing either. Rusted iron. As far as the three-piece set goes, I'm going to initially try the Lost Mouth set on single target. However, I'm probably going to migrate over to Halister. Uh, I know a lot of people really like the Music Box set, but it's just not that good for Warlocks. Uh, the, the music box set is really good for burst DPS classes. Uh, you get that 15% damage every time you pop a daily. Uh, the problem is, is that, you know, you're not going to get the daily enough. Uh, the Halister set is going to give you that bonus, uh, with essentially a 100% uptime. Now the stipulation is with the Halister set is you have to, uh, stand still. So, there's pros and cons, you know. Uh, it's 5% damage with the Halister set. Um, it's 15% with the Music Box set. But you're not going to have 100% uptime with the Music Box set. And it's not, it's not really that great for Warlocks in particular. Because most of our single target damage is DOT damage, right? Uh, we're not a burst class. So, I really don't like the music box set personally for the warlock but hey if you have it and you're using it for single target and it's working for you then more power to you uh but i'm going to probably lean toward the Hallister set uh until i can get the mod 20 set uh once i get the mod 20 set it's the it has the same effect as demogorgon we'll do some testing and make sure uh, it's legitimate, and we'll go from there. But for right now, uh, I'm going to alter between the Halister set and the Lost Mouth set and see what happens. As far as rings go, again, same rings as AoE. Same shirt and pants, same artifact. Um, as far as attributes, again, everything is pretty much the same. The powers, uh, of course, Hellish Rebuke, uh, Hadar's Grasp. Hellfire Ring and Killing Flame. So now we're using Hellfire Ring not only on AoE, but also for single target. Remember I showed you in the rotation on uh, AoE how valuable Hellfire Ring is right now. You can instantly gain your five stacks of Soul Investor. Uh, dailies, we're going Brood of Hadar and Tyrannical. You're pretty much only going to be using Tyrannical. Uh, as far as your features, you're going Deadly Curse and ACC. All-consuming curse. Still. Still to this day, Balthorn uh, and Hellish Rebuke, Deadly Curse, ACC, all you're going to do is sit there and spam your at-wills. As far as the build itself goes, again, we're taking Power of the Nine Hells. That way we can stack our Soul Investor pretty much instantly. Uh, Warlock's Curse, Risky Investment, Creeping Death, and Soul Spark Recovery. It's literally the same build on AoE, guys. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for a rotation, so single target rotation, first of all, you're going to want to make sure you are behind the boss, but for purposes of the video, whatever. Uh, so normally, I lead right in with a Hellfire, 
That way we are gaining our stacks of Ensoul Investor. You can see my Mirage is all attacking right now, but I mean, we're just, we instantly get our five stacks of Soul Investor. So once you get that initial Hellfire Ring on the boss, go ahead, pop your Hadars, start spamming some Hellish to get your Soul Sparks up. Now you have maximized Soul Sparks, bam, daily, right? Or not daily, I'm sorry, Killing Flames. Then you can start dumping your Soul Sparks, and then you rinse and repeat. So for a full rotation where you'll be popping everything, right? You'll lead in with your artifact, you'll get your Hellfire Ring down, your Mirages are out, go ahead and daily, and then you'll Tunnel Vision, your Killing Flames, and then dump your Soul Spark, rinse and repeat. So Hellfire Ring's off cooldown, Hellfire Ring's back on there, Hadar's Grasp, Hellish Rebuke, full, uh, full Soul Sparks, and then Killing Flames. Drop all your soul sparks for the damage, and again, Hellfire Ring, Hadar's Grasp, Spam Hellish Rebuke to get those stacks, now you have full soul sparks, Killing Flames. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, that's it, that's the whole rotation. The reason why we wait off on our Killing Flames is we want to wait that, you know, we get our full soul sparks, uh, that way we get the bonus damage from soul sparks as well. Fairly easy. Moving right along, we'll look at the boons. Again, not going to go in depth. The only changes are instead of taking Deathly Rage on AoE, now we take Bloodlust uh, for the defense shred, uh, the action point gain, and the additional damage. So I'll just hover here for a minute if you want to screenshot. Stronghold, uh, same. Critical Strike, defense. Uh, usually I'll have Revive Sickness on for single target. Companions, uh, Cold Iron Warrior, best in slot, single target, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, even after the nerfs, the adjustments, the changes, whatever you want to call them, uh, Cold Iron Warrior is still pretty much top of the list. There are a couple ones that will give it a run for its money, but I'm mainly just going to stick uh, to the Cold Iron Warrior for the most part. Um, as far as the equipment goes, again, we're running six Indomitables, uh, all of the... Companion pieces are the same. Uh, now the enhancement, uh, currently on console, armor break is still broken. So you can stack armor break. So if you have five people in your group, everyone's running armor break. They all stack. They all stack. Uh, this was recently changed on PC. So that change will be coming to console. And we're just going to simply go back to acute sentences once that happens. So 7.5% uh, crit. Uh, I'm sorry, combat advantage on acute senses. Uh, you're still going to want someone in your group to run armor break. So whether the tank runs it or your heal, your healer runs it, someone, uh, one person still needs to run armor break. It's not going to be a DPS though. As far as your bonuses, uh, pretty much all the same, except we're just putting in the Batiri for the boss damage. So you want that 11% boss damage. So we took the Mystagog out here, or the Cold Iron Warrior here, whatever one you were using in this uh, universal slot on your AoE, uh, you're going to sacrifice that slot for the Batiri. The Batiri's too valuable. 11% boss damage. You can't pass that up. <clears throat> as far as mounts go, we are using Tunnel Vision. Uh, on console right now, I'm using Ferocity still, but I will be changing this to Precision again. Uh, I use Precision on the Augment build. I just need these additional stats, especially if I move my gear around. Uh, I need the Precision. So we're going to be giving up Ferocity, which Ferocity is okay. You know, it's, it's at the bottom of the list for your bonus damage, essentially. So I'm not too worried about giving up Ferocity here uh, to gain the raw statistics that I'm going to need. As far as the stable goes, it's all the same. Assassin's Covenant times two, Warlord's Inspiration times two, one Gladiator's Gal. Uh, the only difference is, is that I will be slotting two more callers here to increase my damage. Uh, since I will be changing this lower item level gear up, my item level should go up to around uh, almost 53,000. So my damage is going to go up. Uh, and I need to hit those statistical caps. So that's why uh, I'll be putting callers here. And like I said, one of those... 
uh, things is, you know, I have to get rid of ferocity here, and then we'll simply be able to put precision here, and you still hit all your stat caps. Again, this is a 100% augment build, so you're going to still need to tweak your stats uh, and make sure you're hitting your 90% thresholds. Uh, the only thing with the single target is, keep in mind, you're not going to get 90% critical strike. Uh, you should have about 82%. I know this video gets a little lengthy. Well, I'm not going to go into the character builder for single target. Um, but all of your uh, important statistics will be hit 90%. Your power, your crit severity, your combat advantage should all remain at 90%. Uh, your critical strike is going to drop to 80%. However, in my opinion, that it doesn't really matter. 80% crit or 90% crit, you're still going to be critting all the time. But for single target, we're going to probably be giving up the Greastos horns for the combat advantage. So, yeah, you're going to, you're going to be missing 10% uh, critical strike. Uh, as far as the buff goes and everything, you're going to use all the same buffs that I showed on the AoE section. Uh, and that should wrap it up, guys. Uh, I don't think I missed anything. Um, you can always cross-reference with the Augment build. The Augment build is literally almost the same exact build, except it uses an Augment instead of an Active. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the uh, Mod 20 uh, Warlock AoE single target uh, companion build. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do have any uh, immediate questions, you're always welcome to join my Discord. Links are in the description as always. Uh, yeah, guys, that's all I got for you. I'll see you real soon.